Hey guys, we're at Propel Bikes in Long Beach. I'm getting some special help here from Chris. Hey guys. I wanted to go in depth with the new Kiox display panel. This thing is awesome. Not only is it removable, but it's magnetically connected. And I've been seeing this on a lot of the higher end mountain bikes. The idea I think is that this mounting port is a little bit less delicate. And if the display gets bumped, it can pop off and the screen's gonna be well protected even if this kind of tumbles along the ground because they're using Gorilla Glass. So that's pretty cool. It's color, it's even got a little micro USB port built into the bottom, which I'm gonna talk about later. So you sort of set it in like that, it clicks in. We've got a power button and a lights button, so I'm gonna start there. Press power, comes to life very quickly. Press the light button, and you can see that that headlight turns on and off, and I love this headlight. This is Bush and Mueller, it's got the side vents going on. We've got brake lights on this bike, very nice, Supernova, and they've got brake light activation. So Chris was pulling the brakes there for a second. Reflective sidewall stripes. This bike's fully loaded, and what is this? This is the load, right? That's right. This is yeah. your bike. Yeah, it's the bike. I'm loving the style, man. Uh, very cool. So I've seen this display on a few other bikes, but it said sample across the front, and it was missing a couple features. So jumping in right from the start, we've got this little curly thing here. That's your motor power and then your pedal power, and it's sort of dials up depending on how hard you're pedaling. Right now, the system isn't off, so it's giving you some feedback about what time of day it is, that the headlights are on, your battery percentage, very cool. Some of the other display panels, like the Intuvia and the Purion, they just had these five bars, and that represented 20% increments. This is a lot more precise. We're in miles per hour right now. So you could be riding this bike, just pedal power alone, and this display would still be giving you a lot of great feedback. As we press plus or minus, it's going to raise the assist level or lower it. So we go eco, and you'll notice it's green, tour, blue, sport, kind of a purple color, and turbo red. Now, Sport may say EMTB depending on the drive system you have. So in this case, we've got Bosch Performance Line, but if you had Performance Line CX on like a mountain bike with high torque, it could have EMTB mode. So I just wanna be clear about that. And then if you're in any of those four levels of assist, you press this little walk mode button right here. It says, okay, hold the plus button. And Chris, if you'll lift the back of the bike, check that out. That's pretty neat. Like whether you get a flat tire or you're in a park or a setting where you really don't feel comfortable riding or maybe you're trying to balance a lot of gear. I love that they've got walk mode and then it's so clear how you use it. And then we've got the left and the right arrows here. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the right. We've got clock, range, trip distance, ride time, power, cadence, average speed, max speed, and then sort of this quadrant layout, distance, range. Range is so cool, by the way. As you arrow up or down, it dynamically adjusts to give you some really precise feedback based on the last mile of riding about how far it thinks you can go. And that changes as you ride. It's, it's really cool. Power again, uh, beats per minute. That's for heart rate monitor. And this, this final screen here is just a really big like heart rate monitor feedback. We don't have one with us and we don't have the Bosch eBike Connect app. Uh, this is something that might launch in 2019 that we're hoping for, and then we'd be able to show that. I did see it demoed by the Bosch folks at Interbike last year, and it was pretty cool. You get some feedback about how hard you're working, and then you can work with the bike to maintain a heart rate that's maybe helping you burn some calories, but not overexert yourself, and this becomes a fitness machine, and that's, that's pretty neat. And who knows, we might see some other apps in the future because it can connect with your phone. So for, for now, heart rate's sort of just empty. And now this is what I was talking about before. If I click right one more time, it brings us around to the front. And this is actually where you start is kind of the curly menu. But here we've got battery one, battery two, and a clock menu. The battery icons are really cool too, because in this case, there are two packs, two power pack 500s, and it's telling you the percentage fill of each one of them. Okay, so this first battery is 91%, the second one's 94%. Bosch does a really good job. If we had the charger and we plugged it in right here, it would actually fill both of these batteries simultaneously. You wouldn't have to unplug it and plug it back in. The other thing is it draws them down simultaneously. So it's not like you're gonna be cycling this one over and over and over, and this one's getting no love. It balances them and that helps to keep both of them lasting longer and it's just easier on the cell. So that is super cool to get that kind of feedback and that precise as well. And then settings. So this is where we're gonna use that little select button. And it's just really deep here. So I'm gonna go through fairly quickly. My e-bike, we can reset. Uh, you can set it to auto reset itself. Maybe you have a fleet or a rental service. Reset range calculation, wheel circumference, components, 
software version within components, hardware, serial number, part number. There's just a lot in here, a lot of technical stuff for maybe the experts to mess yeah. around with. And then down here, we've got Bluetooth. This is what I was talking about before. We can actually turn it on if we want to. And then it says, okay, like let's hook up your smartphone. And we tried to do this. We tried to get the Bosch e-bike connect app, but it's just not available right now. So we'll see. Um, it's nice that they've kind of future-proofed this thing. You know, we might see a whole range of, of applications in the future. And then we've got system settings, brightness, automatic. That's what we've got set up right now. So if I cover it, it can dim a little bit. That's pretty cool. But you might just say, no, I just want it always bright. Do you see how bright that just got? Like, wow. And you can adjust it manually, take it down a little bit. Oh boy, I'm bouncing around a little bit. I'm going to do um, automatic just so it's a little bit less harsh for this walkthrough. Time. We can adjust this if we want to. Date, time zone. You can even switch to 24 hour, that's like military time. Uh, light background, this is interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. So we will have the light background. I'm gonna show you what that means in a second. And then imperial, so that's like miles per hour versus kilometers per hour. Language, factory reset. Okay, so since I just talked about light background, I wanna get out of the menu system for a second and show you what that looks like. See how it's white now instead of black? That might be easier for you to view. Maybe it's really bright out or something, or that's just your preference. For me personally, I like the, back, back, the black background um, because it just blends in and, and maybe highlights some of the other menus a little bit better. I don't know, this might be like um, an accessibility feature for them. Could be, for sure. You know, it, it is, from way back here, you know, the black text is pretty easy to read. This display is a little bit more compact. It's sort of a compromise between, you know, the Perion and the Intuvia in terms of size. Uh, and I like that no matter which menu you're in, as we arrow to the right, you still get that color feedback. So it's blue right now. I can take it up to sport and it says at the top sport and now it's purple or turbo and now it's red. So the idea is that I think your peripheral vision, you might not be able to read that quickly, but you can get some idea or a sense for it uh, just based on the color. That's really cool. So I'm gonna get back into the settings menu. Here we go. System settings, is that where we were? We're in assisting settings. Blech. Date, time format, Imperial. I, I think we, we went through that one actually. So now information, registration. I think in order to register, we need that, that Kiox app again, the e-bike connect app from Bosch. So we're gonna skip that for now. Frequently asked questions. I was curious about this and it just has like a QR code that you'd scan with your phone. It takes you to a Bosch website. Intro to Kiox, this is pretty cool. I'm just gonna zip through this real quick with you guys. Next screen, previous screen, it's talking about those arrows. More support, less support, plus minus. And it's talking about this menu here, that little swirl that we were talking about earlier. So it says motor power is the dark color and your power is the light color. And we keep on going through and it's talking about adjusting the menus and the settings. And then it's giving us some feedback about that battery percentage, that Bluetooth icon, heart rate icon when it's connected. And that's about it. Okay, so let's get out of here. Hooray, we made it. Certificates, this is like UL certification and other federal communications ID for the for the Bluetooth. License info, get more information at their website. Contact us. We haven't done that, but I'm guessing that they'll give you all kinds of great support. I think that's that's it. We have gone through the menu. It's awesome to see this stuff, but there's, there's one other piece. It's where we started. It's that little micro USB port, and you can kind of get to it down here, but it's actually a little bit easier to take the display off completely like this. Chris, can I hand that to you? Yeah, sure. So guys, I went online, found this on Amazon. It was just like a micro USB. I think it was to, to micro. And then I've got um, a little lightning adapter here. And the idea is that this will work with an iPhone, and Chris has an iPhone, so I'm just gonna plug this in, line it up. There we go, okay, we're all set. All right. Go ahead and set the bottom edge in and then clicks it, perfect. So you can imagine having your phone mounted up here possibly. Go ahead and plug it in real quick. There we go. There we go, and it just, it blinked on the, the charge feedback and we can see a lightning bolt. So we actually called Bosch to confirm this just minutes ago. This does put out five volts, one amp, so a thousand milliamps. Uh, and that's awesome, right? Like you, you see two amp chargers, that's like a fast charger, but one amp is enough to actually charge an iPhone and maintain it. 
and that's something that had, had been missing in the past. Yeah, absolutely. The Intuvia, which puts out a half an amp, might work on Samsung phones, but won't, won't work on an iPhone. At least consistently. And the Purion won't work at all. So yeah, uh, it's really great to have this as an option. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about this. I mean, it puts it in the category, you know, there are a lot of other displays out there. Some of them are kind of cheap and they're like, we have USB. And so I was always hoping that Bosch would do this because, you know, we have two big battery packs here. That's one kilowatt hour worth of capacity and it's running the lights, it's running the motor and stuff. Why not top off your phone along the way? So kudos to Bosch. I think that's about it. I'm gonna have a detailed write-up in the electricbikereview.com forum, so you can check that out. I'll link to it in the description. I welcome your comments, feedback, and maybe we'll check out that eBike Connect app at some point uh, later in the year. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you.